Section 3.1, problem 68. In this problem, we are given a function, g of x, and it is defined piecewise. So, g of x is defined in the definition of g of x is split into three regions. And it is equal to negative 1 minus 2x only when x is smaller than negative 1. And then it is defined to be x squared when x is between negative 1 and 1. And then it, it is defined to be x when x is greater than 1. So how do we determine the derivative of g? So naturally, the derivative of g will also if it's even defined, be split up into multiple regions. Now, if x is smaller than negative 1, then for every point in this interval, the derivative is defined, and it's just simply the derivative of negative 2. Or rather, it's the derivative of negative 1 minus 2x, and the, the derivative of that function is negative 2. Now, here is where this definition is going to differ from g of x. We're going to have to consider x equals negative 1 by itself. Why do we do this? Because negative 1 is a boundary that's shared by two portions of g. Right? If you look at the definition of g, you have this portion and this portion, and they both border negative 1. So for g to have a derivative there, that means the derivative of that top function and the derivative of the middle function have to agree at negative 1. And let's see if that's true. So at x equals negative 1, the derivative of 1 minus 2x is negative 2. So let us write this out. d dx of negative 1 minus 2x at x equals negative 1 is equal to negative 2. And ddx of x squared at x equals negative 1. Well, that's just 2x evaluated at x equals negative 1, because 2x is the derivative of x squared. And 2x evaluated at x equals negative 1 is also negative 2. So that means they equal each other, which means the derivative at that point is well defined. So we say that since these two derivatives are equal to each other, we can unequivocally say that the derivative at negative 1 is negative 2. And then between negative 1, strictly between negative 1 and, and 1, we just simply use the second function. And that's going to give us 2x. And then once again, we have to evaluate x equals 1 by itself because once again, if you look at the definition of the function g, this function and this portion, they both border 1. So once again, we have to use our calculations of the derivatives of both x squared and x at 1 and see if they equal each other before we can say whether or not the derivative is defined there. 
So, once again, the derivative of x squared at x equals 1 is just 2x evaluated at x equals 1, and that is equal to 2. And then the derivative with respect to x of x evaluated at x equals 1 is equal to 1 evaluated at x equals 1, which is, of course, 1. And now notice these two things do not equal each other, which means the derivative there is undefined. So we write undefined. And then once x is greater than 1, we just use the x portion of the definition of g of x to get that its derivative is 1. So in answer to the question, the derivative of g is defined everywhere except except for one value, right? Except when x is equal to 1. And now let's draw the functions to see how this matches up graphically. So here we have our x-axis, and then we have our y-axis. And let us draw out some tick marks for negative 1 and 1. So, according to the definition for g of x, between, or rather smaller than negative 1, uh, the function is negative 1 minus 2x. So, if you evaluate that at x equals negative 1, you get positive 1. So it starts at the point 1, 1, and it's, it is a line of slope negative 2. Now, between negative 1 and 1, it is the x squared function, which is that. And then greater than 1, you have x. So now notice this picture corresponds to our intuition. See, everywhere along this function, the graph is smooth, which means we can find the tangent, or in other words, we can find the derivative, except for this one point. And this one point is when the x-coordinate is equal to 1. And as we noted in our derivation of g prime of x, it's defined everywhere except for x equals to 1. So our picture corroborates what we figured out algebraically about the derivative. So now let's draw out the derivative graph as well. So, when x is smaller than negative 1, in fact, when x is smaller than or equal to negative 1, it's always a value negative 2. So let's extend this down some more. And let's say that this tick mark is negative 2. So that means before reaching negative 1, the derivative is always negative 2 then it becomes 2x. So that means it slowly goes up like this, all the way until it reaches the value 2. And then at 1, as we've remarked earlier, it's not defined. So there's a little open circle there. And then past 1, the derivative is 
one. So this is g of x. And then what we just drew is g prime of x.